In this tutorial, we're going to talk about the external resources component. With this component, you can upload and download videos, images, and Swift animations directly from your own web server rather than uploading and downloading these resources from our server. So let's talk about some of the advantages of using external resources. For one, you can upload and download resources that are very large directly from your own server. So if you have a local server that's geographically close to you, for example, it's going to be faster to upload and to download these resources since you don't have to cross the web to access particular files. In fact, you can even install an Apache web server directly on a Sonic player and access files through the local Apache web server through the HTTP 127.0.0.1 link. So that's another possibility with the external resources component. Also, if you work in a secure environment and you have sensitive information that you don't want to upload to the web, you can host that information, those files like those images and the videos and Swift animations, you can host them within your local intranet or within your local area network file servers and access them again across your local area network rather than over the web. Another advantage is that if you wanted to just manage files outside of the Sonic Studio, you can simply swap files on your local area server and the next time the timeline loads, it will load the latest file that you've copied to the server. So you don't necessarily have to use the Sonic Studio to manage content. And just like you would expect, the Sonic player caches all the content regardless if you use the external resources or just regular resources. So if the player loses connectivity, there's not going to be any interruption to your audience. So with that, let's go ahead and jump into the Sonic Studio and look how to configure the external resources. So first let's go ahead and compare and contrast. So normally you would go to resources, click on the plus sign from here, go from local, select let's say uh, Swift animation, double click on it, click on file save, and this would upload the resource to our server so you can start using it on your timeline. And now that the resource has uploaded to the server, I can switch over here, select it, and use it on the timeline like I would normally do. But in contrast, let's go ahead and show you how to use the external component. So now go over here to components and we'll first go ahead and select the external Swift image component, drag and drop that, and go ahead and use the external video component as well, drag that to the channel as well, and delete this. So let's go ahead and double click on the external Swift image component to load up its properties and go ahead and paste in the address. And again, this address could be anything. So if this is a local web server that you're accessing, that will be just fine. And press on enter. And you can see that the image loaded just as we expected to. Next, go ahead and double click the external video. And just like before, we'll go ahead and paste in an address of a video and press on enter. And you can see that the video played just fine. Let's go ahead and press on play to preview the presentation. And you can see that our image loads over here in the upper right corner. In a second now, you can see that now our video is playing. So the external video and the external Swift image components allow you to load content directly from your own web server rather than uploading to our servers and grabbing them from there. I hope you enjoyed this video tutorial and thanks for watching.